Good afternoon, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Yeshua. Today is Saturday the 4th of November 2023. It is 4.12pm here in Australia. I hope you're doing really well and I hope you've been blessed. Oh man, the smile on my face, brothers and sisters. My cheeks are going to be really sore by the end of this video. Man, Father God is so good. Oh, I'm just so excited to share this video with you. There's so many incredible things have happened. I'm just sitting here studying and it's 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 go time. It is so go time, brothers and sisters. The amount of revelation that is coming and flowing like a waterfall now is unbelievable. Now, um, somebody made an awesome comment the other day um, that they've noticed that a lot of channels are being banned and uh, videos are being removed and stuff like this. So if you go onto Google or DuckDuckGo, whatever you use, and type in YouTube downloader, and um, it's a basically you can download the video to your, you know, to your computer file, and it, you know, you have it there forever. So if it gets taken down, you still got it. So just type in um, YouTube downloader, and then you just all you have to do is click the link of the video. Put it in there and it downloads onto your computer. So it's a good way of keeping important videos because I, I reckon they're going to be taking lots and lots and lots of videos down. So I think my biggest problem with my last video is I was using a lot of uh, video footage. So maybe if I don't use video footage in today's video, they might it might be okay. So, oh my goodness, I don't even know where to start. I thought I have to bring this video out because... And I'm not even going to try and, you know, comprehend. I've just prayed to Father. I said, please just help me with this. But I need to get it out now before I forget because there's so much stuff he's showing me right now. So the first two things I want to bring across before I forget is two comments on my page. Incredibly, incredibly, incredibly significant. Um, so this one here is by Rosie Osborne 2778. Thank you, sister. And she said, hey, I wanted to let you know about the London Lord Mayor's show. It's on the 11th of November and they roll out the statues of Gog and Magog. I feel it's relevant. Hi, <laughs> Karambi. <Columbia>, yes. <laughs> I cannot believe this is so exciting. Oh my goodness. All right. I need to calm the farm down. Okay. So I'm like, wow, this I have to see. So I've just done a quick um, Google search of it. And um, it's this, the Lord Mayer's show. And the date, the 11th of November, 2023. It's 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And check this out. This is the Gog. And I, I'm like, because at first I couldn't find anything about it. But there's literal statues of Gog and Magog. Oh my goodness, brothers and sisters, like the comfort, thank you, Father, all praises go to you, Father God, okay, because he's put on my heart and my soul that I'm spending my last breaths here on this earth to try and tell everybody that will listen that the um, putting the millennial reign in the future and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's not, it's not, brothers and sisters, it's literally happening right before our eyes. And Father is giving me confirmation after confirmation to try and prove it and open everybody's eyes to where we are in time. This is literally the beginning of the Gog and Magog war that's happening over in the Middle East. Satan's um, minions, his demons and his workers are laying the groundwork for that war. Okay, Satan has been bound and oh my goodness, I found some incredible scriptures to prove that Satan has been bound since Christ's um, crucifixion. Okay. Oh, this is so very exciting. So here we have this Lord's Mayor on the 11th of November, starting at 11 a.m. They're rolling out statues of Gog and Magog, brothers and sisters. <laughs> this is it's almost funny. It's almost funny. So thank you so much, sister, for letting me know that because this is unbelievable. Okay, um, so the next one. The next comment I got was this 11th month, 11 day, um, 11th month, 11 day, 11th hour, am amnestice day, 1918, World War, Revelation 915. Okay. <clears throat> and this is from uh, Terry Sav Savril. 
I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, 7695. And uh, this is, uh, what do you, where is it? Sorry, Revelation 915. And four angels were loosed, which were prepared for one hour, one day, one month, and one year, 11, one, 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 <laughs> to slay the third of man. Okay. And, and straight away, I'm like, you know, I wrote in the comments, I'm like, um, oh, wow. One year, one month, one day, one hour, one, 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 one. Great insight. Okay. On November the 11th, 1918, after more than four years of horrific fighting and the loss of millions of lives, the guns... On the Western Front fell silent, although fighting continued elsewhere. The armist, armistice, I don't know how you say that, between German and the Allies. Okay, so basically that's what I was saying before. On the 11th of the 11th at 11 a.m., um, you could hear the birds chirping. The gunfires just stopped. They laid their weapons down. They went home. This is exactly what's going to happen I, I truly so much in my heart and spirit believe this is exactly what's going to play out now and Trump is going to be the head dude that's going to come in he's going to give that fake sense of peace and safety and it's going to be a ceasefire but a fake ceasefire right because he's the only one that can solve this problem uh, it's just working out so perfect okay um, so yeah there'll be a ceasefire on the 11th um, the 11th of the 11th 2023 and i believe this is the day that we're going to go into the ark brothers and sisters this is the day we're going to go into the ark the door's going to be shut okay and then there's going to be a false sense of peace and safety on the world when the bridegroom has been removed off this earth so the voice of the bridegroom will no longer be here there'll be no more um you know people preaching no more re people preaching repentance or trying to save people or trying to win people to Christ that voice is going to be gone so the majority of the evil world that's left here will be they'll be really happy okay they're going to be really happy because they don't have to put up with us trying to tell them to repent or the, that they're living in sin this is absolutely incredible okay so uh that's really cool I had to get those two things said before I forgot them okay because that's really amazing so um, this video here it was just a little two minute video to let you know that my last video got removed off YouTube and it's over on Rumble okay so, and the link is in the description box you can go and watch it <coughs> father's even gone as far to reveal to me that um, the restrainer is actually talking about Satan being bound and that's why it was very hard for the church to know, um, you know, who the restrainer was. You know, the church said it was the Holy Spirit. I always said it was Michael the Archangel. But then I was talking with a brother on Discord and, um, you know, I just I just typed it in there and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my goodness, how did I not see that before? Of course it's um, Satan being bound in the pit. That's what the restrainer is. I mean, that's just every essence of what that means, you know, that Satan has been restrained. So, and that makes so much sense when you read Thessalonians chapter, um, Second Thessalonians chapter two, that makes so much sense when it says, you know, the day of the Christ, the day of Christ will not come until the, um, the apostasia comes first and that man of sin is, um, you know, is going to be revealed, but, um, you know, what's restraining him right now. And once that, um, you know, once the restraining has been let go, then, you know, this is all going to kick off. And that makes so much sense because Satan has a little season. Once he is released out of the pit where he's being restrained right now, and I've got some incredible Bible verses to show you, brothers and sisters. I'm so excited because so many people have been saying I'm, I'm going on this wild, you know, this, this uh, wild rabbit hole and deceiving people. And now I'm just so thankful to Father that he's kept me strong in this. And I haven't given up because now I believe if, if you can't, if what I'm going to show you and you're still going to have doubts about it, that I can't really, I can't really help you anymore, if you know what I'm saying. But anyway, um, but it just makes so much sense. So anyway. 
let's get into these Bible verses. So I was having a look um, at this article here. I just want to read this article because um, sometimes it's easier if somebody's already written it and it just makes so much more sense when somebody else writes it rather than me have to try and explain it. Okay, so this is about the binding of Satan. Okay, Revelation 20 is the only place in the Bible that speaks of the millennium, the thousand year reign of the triumphal triumph Christ on earth. Nowhere else does the Holy Scriptures mention this word, so it is necessary to look at the related teachings elsewhere in Scripture to understand what it means in Revelation. A sound principle of biblical interpretation used from ancient times by Augustine and early and other early Christian writers is that one interprets the few mentions of a word or concepts in light of the many and symbolic and the symbolic in light of the plain. It would be contrary to a clear understanding of the scriptures to make the many fit into the one. <clears throat> Therefore, we should understand what Revelation 20, a highly symbolic book, says about the millennium in the light of a very large number of other biblical passages that tell us more plainly and less symbolically what occurs between Christ's resurrection and ascension to heaven. Oh my goodness, brothers and sisters, this part's never occurred to me before. I always assumed that, um, I, I knew that on Christ's death was when um, Satan was bound. But th this revelation today, from reading these articles and, um, and and going to scripture, I'm like, oh my goodness, of course, of course, of course. Okay, so what occurs between Christ's resurrection and ascension to heaven and his final return to earth to complete his victorious work? With that in mind, let us seek biblical help in order to make sense of the very first thing that is said to occur in this thousand year period between Christ's two coming, the binding of Satan. Okay, notice they say here that this is between his uh, his resurrection and the uh, second coming of Christ. Okay, so they're not saying it's a thousand years in the future or whatever. All right, so Revelation 20 verses 1 to 3 says that a mighty angel from God binds the devil for a thousand years specifically verse 3 relates that he is bound from deceiving the nations during this period something happens to Satan's ability to keep the uh, to keep the nations of the earth blind uh, blinded from seeing who God is and from what his gospel means for them as a result of Christ's finished work in dying on the cross in rising from the dead in ascending to the Father and being crowned on the throne of glory, Satan lost his power to deceive the untold millions of pagans whom he formerly kept blinded to God's saving truth. This is this is the people in the Old Testament, okay? Satan was able to deceive the untold millions of pagans who were formerly kept blinded from God's saving truth. And this is what I've been trying to say, brothers and sisters, that in the Old Testament where people are aligning the millennial reign, where they're saying, oh, look, you know, the lion is lying down with the lamb. I know it says the wolf now. We won't go into that. But, you know, when all these wonderful things are happening, you know, they're talking about this is going to be in a certain period of time in a thousand years time. OK, no, brothers and sisters, this is on the new heaven and the new earth. You've got to remember that the Old Testament people and the prophets, they didn't know the mystery of Christ's crucifixion on the cross. They knew they knew of a coming Messiah, but they didn't know the glory of what Christ was going to accomplish when he died for our sins on the cross. This was kept a secret, right? Even Satan didn't know. And I've got a scripture here too that proves that Satan would have never crucified him. If he had known what was what Jesus was going to accomplish by dying on the cross for us. Okay, the ancient story of Job may give us some important insights into a massive reduction of Satan's power over the heathen nations. Job 1, 6-12 portrays Satan as possessing the ability to come into God's immediate presence along with other angels or sons of God. He used this place of power to cause great harm to Job. But according to what Christ said in the gospel, Satan lost that privilege 
access to the heavenly courts as a result of the incarnation and work of Christ. The 70, uh, in Luke chapter 10, 18 to 90, the 70 disciples return with great joy from their successful mission in preaching the gospel, healing the sick and casting out demons. Christ then explains how they were able to accomplish these wonders. He said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Jesus explains that Satan's fall in terms of Christianity ministry, behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. It is, important to, um, it is significant that the first beings to recognize the incarnate Christ, according to the Gospel of Mark, were demons. Mark 1.24 and Luke 4.34 are among the passages that show the demons crying out in terror that the Holy One of God has come to torment them. Jesus explains that when he cast out demons by the Spirit of God, it meant that the Kingdom of God had come. In his work, he was binding the strong man, that is the devil, who formerly had been keeping people in the dark and painful prison of unbelief, sin and certain judgment. After the Lord's crucifixion and resurrection and immediately before his ascension to the Father, he commissioned the church to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And they would be able to do this because of Christ's victory over Satan, who had long blinded the nations. For Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Satan's illegitimate power over the nations has been rested uh, uh, wrested from him and placed into the hands of the legitimate Lord and Savior of the world. Now the Christian church can do its work. It can engage in successful missions all over the world, bringing the good news of freedom from captivity to those who had long been in chains because of sin and unbelief. Hallelujah! Like, brothers and sisters, do you know how wonderful it is when Father shows you something and you study for weeks? Because you, you want so much to explain to your brothers and sisters who you love so much. This wonderful truth that Father's showing you in the Word of God. And then to have somebody write an article that just literally takes the words out of your mind and puts them on a piece of paper. This is exactly what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. This is, uh, this is bringing Christ to his rightful standing about the authority that, that he has and that he gave to us. And it was because Satan has been bound. Now, what's so amazing is, let's go and read the scriptures, okay? This is, this is brilliant. I can't believe this. When I read 2 Peter chapter 2 today, oh, wow. Check this out. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their uh, per pernicious, pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of the truth shall be evil spoken of i think that's got a lot to do with the doctrine of the trinity right there because many follow that uh, but anyway we won't get into that um and through covetedness shall they with fiend words make merchandise of you whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not listen to this for if god spared not the angels that sinned but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved into judgment. Okay, so God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down into hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved into the judgment. Let's go to Revelation 20. Okay, notice he, de he delivered them into chains of darkness. Okay, into hell. Let's go to Revelation 20. We'll use the interlinear Bible and read what it says. And I saw an angel descending out of heaven, holding the key. That's very important. Holding the key of the abyss 
and a chain great in the hand of him and he sees the dragon the serpent ancient who is the devil and satan and bound him for a thousand years and he cast him onto the um, onto the abyss and shut and sealed it over him so that he should not deceive any longer the nations until were completed the thousand years after these things it is necessary for to be released him for a little time okay so satan um you know this angel comes down with a key with a key now here here is the thing brothers and sisters here's the thing i need you to be open-minded and this is all scriptural okay because you see this in the story of the burning bush Okay, you see this in the story of the burning bush. Out of the bush, it says an angel of the Lord. Okay, an angel of the Lord was speaking to Moses through the burning of the... Or Abraham, sorry. Was it Moses or Abraham? Uh, Moses, I think. Okay, and it specifies it was an angel of the Lord. So sometimes I believe very much that Christ, Yeshua Jesus Christ, before he came to this earth as a human being, he was represented as an angel. Okay, because also, in, and please go and read the scriptures for yourself. Don't just call me a heretic or I'm um, being blasphemy. But this is legit what the word of God says. Okay, and um, in the first book of Hebrews, it, Father even says, To what day did I say to any of the angels, Today you will be my son? This is not me saying this, brothers and sisters. This is legit father saying this to his son and to all the angels there. Okay, so this is why I need you to have an open mind, brothers and sisters, because the church has told us a big fat lie in a lot of stuff. And I think we are that they told us these lies so that when we start questioning them, it's like, Oh, you're stepping in the hot water there. You're being a heretic. I mean, look at all the people that question the Catholic Church in the old days. They got put on, burn on the stake and all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? And they got exiled to other places. But we, anyway, we're getting sidetracked there. Okay. I saw an angel descending out of heaven holding the key. Who has the key, brothers and sisters? Who is the only person who has the key? Who won the key? Um, where's, where's the key? Where's the key? Where's the key? Here. We put in the, the thing of the key. Okay. A Bible search, uh, search word. Okay. There's eight, eight brothers and sisters results for the word key in the New Testament. Matthew 16, 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. And whatever thou shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. <laughs> and whatsoever shall be loosed on earth, oh, Father, shall be loosed in heaven. Luke eleven fifty two. Woe unto you, lawyers, for you have taken the key of knowledge. Ye have entered not in yourself, and them that were entering you hindered. Revelation 1.18, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of hell and of death okay remember when jesus christ when he died on the cross brothers and sisters he went down into hades and he freed and he freed the captives this is why those people came out in uh, matthew 28 i want to say let's have a quick look matthew 27 sorry uh verses 50 okay when jesus when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the grave after his resurrection, and went to the holy city and appeared to many. Brothers and sisters, this is incredible. Yeshua Jesus Christ holds the key of life and death. He went down into Hades, into hell, and he freed the captives of all the people that Satan had had deceived and um, had captive over before the wonderful uh, um, atoning sacrifice of Yeshua Jesus Christ. This is incredible. Okay, 
um, this is that this is when Satan was bound, brothers and sisters. This is when Satan was bound. Jesus went in down to hell. He took the captives and set the captives free. Right. This is why he read that scroll in the temple because he was here to set the captives free. And then um, in return, he bound the enemy. He bound Satan. Okay. He bound him. And Revelation. Um, 3 7 and to the angel of the church of philadelphia write these things say he that is holy he that is true he that has the key of david he that opened it and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man opens see right here it's christ that shuts and christ that opens he is the angel brothers and sisters that locks him in and he is the angel that releases him for the short time for the 42 months Oh, brothers and sisters, this is amazing. Praise Almighty God, His holy, holy, holy name, Jehovah, and His precious Son, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Praise their holy name. This is fantastic. Revelation 9, 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Revelation 20. And one, I saw the angel come from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Also note, the angel is the angel of the Lord. Okay, the angel of the Lord. This was down in um, Abraham's time as well. Okay, when the three angels came down to them and one of them got called Lord. Okay, one of them was Christ, brothers and sisters. And um, also, too, when the, the fire of God, the pillar of um, fire and the cloud, uh, the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, that was the angel of the Lord that went before them. That was Christ, brothers and sisters. This is the angel. This is the angel that Father said to what day out of all the angels have I said today you are going to be my son. This is why Satan was so jealous, brothers and sisters. This is what caused this whole thing to begin with and this is amazing that he has the keys that Christ has the keys because he won the victory on the cross and he had the key to life and death and to heaven and hell and he went and freed the captives and he when he freed the captives he bound the enemy okay so that the gospel the good news of the Bible the truth was able to flourish it does not mean that we're not going to have trials and persecutions throughout this period. Okay, these trials and persecutions are there for our refining and our purifying. And, um, you know, it's, it's there for our chastisement. This is our time that we're getting refined and purified. The time to come, the great tribulation, the wrath of God. We're not appointed to that, brothers and sisters. <sighs> this is unbelievable. This is such a wonderful revelation. Okay, and then you can see, okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is, um, you know, people want to know, but it says a thousand years, you know, people can't get over this thousand year bit. For one, I mean, this is why Father just will not let me go without just being really um, diving deep into this thousand years that we have been fed this lie the thousand years got added to the calendar brothers and sisters okay and it's not only just a thousand years we've you know because a lot of people say oh well then if we're really in the year 1023 do we have to wait another 10 years no brothers and sisters no because the thing is um like i explained before in the year 895 san francisco they had footage of a, a tram terminal Okay, beautiful tram terminal, people were wearing lovely clothes, like what you would see in the so-called 1800s, but this was in the year 895, you know, bus busy um, uh, city area, trams going back and forth, whatever, they had the footage of it, and then three days after that footage, massive worldwide earthquakes of seven to eight plus above these earthquakes caused mud flood everywhere. They The mud um, overcame a lot of the buildings. And then, um, you know, this is when, uh, what do you call it? What's his name? Uh, the Catholic Church, right? The Catholic Church, Pope Gregory, 
it, with the help of Constantine, the Empress of Constantine and all this kind of thing, they went from October the 4th in the year um, 582, it was October the 4th, 582. The next day was October the 15th, 1582. They literally added 1,000 years on overnight. And they did this because Satan is wise. Satan and, you know, his minions and everything like this, he has, he was able to, um, you know, remember in Second Thessalonians, it says, and he comes after the working of Satan's and all um, lines and wonders. Okay. This is the Antichrist spirit that many, there are many Antichrists, right? Many people against Christ. And these are the demons and these are the, the uh, disembodied spirits that have possessed men throughout the generations and throughout the centuries. And these are the evil men doing the evil works. And they're laying the footwork and the groundwork right now for this Gog and Magog war. They're preparing everything for their master. Okay, and once their master is released, I truly believe on the 11th, my goodness, brothers and sisters, the 11 11 okay the remembrance day it truly will be a remembrance day and how is this the feast of uh the first month the fifth month the seventh month and the tenth month they're called the days of remembrance in in the word of god right so here is satan's day of remembrance okay 11 11 this is why this is why that number is seen as a good number, as seen as a devil number and seen as a heavenly number, right? An angel number, so to speak. And, you know, people will say, oh, you shouldn't talk about numerology and things like this. But brothers and sisters, there's a whole book called the Book of Numbers in the Word of God. Numbers are important to Father. And, um, you know, it, whatever there's good, there's going to be bad of it, okay? Because Satan mimics everything. But this is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. Now, um, you know, not only did the church add a thousand years on, but like I said, that uh, the San Francisco earthquake, right, that happened three days after this footage, um, you know, in the year 895, well, when they had that earthquake, they listed that earthquake in the history books as being in the year 1906. Okay, so they added, what, nine more years? So there's nine more years. There you go, brothers and sisters. It's the year 2023. So that's, you know, that's going to be taking us up to, um, you know, 30, 2030, uh, 2032. Oh, sorry, the year 1032, so to speak. What I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to convey to you here, brothers and sisters, is there's been so much added and, um, you know, we're right on target. We are literally right on target and we're waiting 2000 years after the death of Christ. And it seems to me that it's exactly right on the money, right on the day, you know, exactly the amount of years when Christ died on the cross, if he died when he was 30 years old. You know, it's probably the year 19, uh, it's probably the year 1090, uh, oh, sorry, it's probably the year 1030, okay, truly. Okay, the, the greatest trick of the enemy is the deception in the times and laws. Because if he can confuse us to where we are, what time we are, you know, and all these kind of things, then he's doing a wonderful job and he has done a wonderful job until the books were opened that Daniel was talking about. Okay, the books have all been opened now. Knowledge is increasing, it's going to and fro. And uh, just while we're here speaking of the thousand years, we go down to the word uh, thousand, which is chi uh, chil chilai, chilai. Okay, we're going to go there and we're going to see that this uh, this word... How is it pronounced? It doesn't say how it's pronounced, but it's uh, chill, chillier, chillier, okay, chillier. And as you can see here, there's eight occurrences for chillier, and that is like a thousand years, the Lord as a thousand years, 
and the Lord is as a thousand years. So that's in Second Peter. That's where it's talking about the, uh, a day is like a thousand years. And notice the word is like, okay? This is like saying, and the beast was like to a leopard. And um, the beast was, you know, to like an eagle or, you know, had the face of a man. It's describing something like. So this, this uh, use of the word thousand is not a literal um, number thousand, okay? Because we're here, over here we have the three instances of the word thousand, okay? And this is what you have to understand with the, with the Greek, is it's very important to have a look at what context. It's like the word there, okay? We can say, oh, I've got to go over there, and that's T-H-E-R-E, -E, or um, it's their it's their clothing, see, T-H-E-I-R. It's kind of like that. And hapazo is one very, very uh, significant one too. You know, the word hapazo is has a slight um, change of spelling too. And there's plenty of hapazos in the word of God. There's 14, I think. But there's only two, the one in Thessalonians and the one in uh, Revelation chapter 12, where it says caught up to God's throne. Those are the, the true... Um, Hapazos, like the one that we love, you know, the rapture, the catching up to God's throne. Um, so the same instance with this, okay, because we go here and we go to, um, I think it's, so it's Strong's uh, 5507. Okay, we come down here. Um, word origin, a, a prime word, a thousand, one thousand, thousand or twelve hundred. And um, we've got here, plural of uncertainty, affinity, a thousand thousand. Okay. So this is, um, and you see the other usage of the word. We come back here. We look at the other two. There's one here of two occurrences of the word. And this is the actual proper number. Okay. So, and they will prophesy for 1200 or they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred you know, in 60 days. So that's giving you a proper number. Okay, there's two occurrences of that. And then there's one occurrence of uh, this. And this is a dimension or, um, um, well, this, you know, by the space of a thousand and six hundred. So this is the one where it says, you know, the blood will come up to the uh, the horse's bridle of the space of 1,600 cubics, whatever, whatever the verse said. But this is like a, a dimension. So this is what we have to be really careful of. So the word a thousand here in Revelation 20, brothers and sisters, doesn't necessarily mean a literal thousand years. But it can also it can also mean that too, because of what I've just told you about the thousand years that the Catholic Church has added onto the calendar. Okay, and then you know, because there's so many prophecies of uh you know where people keep writing to me saying yes but you know the word of god it has to have that you know it was six days of creation and we're going to have the seven the seventh day is a rest so there's six thousand years and then one thousand years for the millennial reign it makes perfect sense nowhere does it say that in the scriptures though brothers and sisters nowhere does it say that in the scriptures when Father says um, a day is like a thousand years, that is being that is showing you how um, that's a symbolic way of saying something to say one day for uh, a thousand you know days or years for you is then just like a drop in the ocean for me. I hope you understand what I'm saying. This is why looking at the interlinear Bible is so important to find out what is the context of the word. And, and what's so amazing is, is we can see here that, um, you know, that, that Christ has the key of the abyss and a chain great in the hand of him. And he sees the dragon and the serpent who is the devil and Satan and bound him and cast him into the abyss and shut and sealed it over him that he should not deceive the nations until they were complete. 
uh, completed the thousand years after these things, it's necessary for him to be released for a little time. That little time there, brothers and sisters, is the same thing in chapter um, Revelation chapter 6, where it says, you know, the souls under the altar are saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do you not judge and avenge our blood on them? Uh, judge and avenge of blood for those who spilt it on the earth. He gives them white robes and he says, wait, uh, arrest a little time. It's exactly the same Greek words. It's a little time. The ones under the altar, the souls under the altar. And, and again, I want to explain too for the people who have the question of, well, who are these people? Um, you know, we go down here and I saw thrones and they that sat on them and judgment was given unto them and I, and the souls of those having been beheaded because of the testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God okay so those people who have been beheaded this is why it's so important brothers and sisters that um, you understand the significance of Islam okay from the year 688 AD, when the Dome of the Rock was built on top of the temple in Jerusalem, that was the abomination of desolation standing where it ought not to be. There has been 1,335 years until this year, 2023. Okay, and since that time, in and, and before that time, but particularly since 688, um, there has been souls, uh, people who have been beheaded. Have a look at that nation, as at Islam. They will behead you, okay? That is one nation in the world that uses beheading still to this day. We've seen it in our recent history, okay? It's gone viral over the internet when those 20 Christians were brought down to the beach, okay? And they were all unfortunately beheaded. It was horrible, horrific, but this is to show you who... The word of God is talking about and notice the souls under the altar they were slain so it means everybody who was killed or who has been beheaded particularly that's a very specific thing anybody who becomes a martyr for the word of God will reign with Christ for this time okay it can be you know you could have been the first one to be headed in the year 688 for example and you've been reigning with Christ since then you could have been beheaded you know yesterday and you're going to be reigning with Christ in the spiritual kingdom the kingdom of heaven brothers and sisters is not a physical kingdom again I want to stress what the Jews thought of the Messiah what they thought he was going to bring was a physical kingdom this is why they didn't like him they expected him to bring a physical kingdom and he did not. He, Christ even said this. He said, the kingdom of heaven is something you cannot observe with your eyes. For the kingdom of heaven is within you. This is the Holy Spirit, the power that resides within you to have authority over all evil, over the serpents, the scorpions and over all evil and nothing will hurt you. This is the power Okay, but we have been denied of the power or we haven't been denied, but we've been deceived of knowing that we have this power. We should be able to be raising people from the dead. We should be going around to all the hospitals right now and literally healing people out of the beds and raising people from the dead. This is the power that we should have. But Satan's minions have done such a good job to make us feel that, um, you know, we do not have this power. And this is why they give us all these stories of these th things that have happened in the past, you know, like, oh, the, the Christians were fed to the lions, lions' dens for entertainment for the Romans and stuff, and talking about the Dark Ages, you know, when really the Dark Ages was a, a cover-up for the ages that were dark because they were added onto the Bible, brothers, I mean, onto the calendar. You know what I mean? This is legit why they're called the Dark Ages because there was there's nothing, no historical evidence of anything happening in between this period of any significance, you know, from whenever they decided to add, you know, that thousand years in the Bible. But this is what I'm trying to say to you. This is evidence of why in the Old Testament 
they they talk about the you know what's happening on the new heavens and the new earth and in the old testament where they're saying you know that infants will grow up and they'll become 100 years and then men won't die until you know they're very 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 old and that they didn't have the comprehension of what Christ was going to do, that Christ was going to give us um, immortality, that we were going to reign forever and be reconciled back to Father and see him face to face. They didn't understand this. They did not understand this. And you know what the other wonderful thing is? Is that... Um, <clears throat> You know, it talks about the weapons and stuff will be piled up and, um, you know, everyone's going to make um, all this stuff out of all the weapons that are going to be piled up and things like this. People still need to understand that on the new heavens and on the new earth, there's going to be a corner pocket, which is a desolate wasteland. Whatever Babylon is, whether that's America, which I truly believe it will be, or if it's somewhere in the Middle East, it really doesn't matter. Whatever Babylon, the new Babylon is now, that will forever be on the new heavens and the new earth, brothers and sisters. Um, we are not going into the new heavens and the new earth and where the new Jerusalem is going to come down on this earth. We're not going in there being robots. We are going to be like we are now with complete free will. This is why it says in, in Zechariah, or Ezekiel, sorry, that, uh, is it Ezekiel? It's either Ezekiel or Zechariah. It says this is why, um, you know, it talks about the Egyptians. If they don't come up to the Feast of Tabernacles, then Father's going to send a plague on them, or he's going to send the famine on to them. It is for every nation in the earth to come up to the Feast of Tabernacles once a year, because Father will be residing on this earth in the New Jerusalem. We're going to be going around doing our own things, building our own houses and our vineyards and everything and living life like we do now, except in perfection, brothers and sisters, like it was in Eden. OK, but we're still going to have free will. But Christ will be there with the holes in his hand, the holes in his side and the holders in his feet forever and eternity as a reminder of what he did for us on the cross. And there will be a desolate wasteland over in the corner as a reminder of what sin did to the world. This is why sin will never rise up again like it did. It will never, this, what we're going through now will never happen again because people will be instantly punished or they'll have an instant, instant consequence for their actions, right? But you've got to remember the presence of the Almighty God. We're going to see him face to face. and We're going to be in the presence of his son too. We're going to be able to talk talk with them, walk with them. You know, there's, there's going to be no need. Because we're going to have a constant memory of what sin did to this world. This will not occur again. The evil will not occur again on this scale. And we will shame those people. If they, um, you know, they don't come up to the tabernacle and stuff. We won't want anything to do with them because it'll be crazy town. You know, you will not want to be one of those people who do that. And they won't do it ever again. I can guarantee that. Brothers and sisters, I hope this video has blessed you. Oh, my goodness. I'm just on fire at the moment. My spirit is like on fire. This is such an incredible information, revelation and I know that the time is, I know that, I know that I know that I know that I know that the time is so imminent. We are in the, uh, the, the very beginnings of the Gog and Magog war. What you see in the Middle East will not settle down. It's only going to get to a point. It's going to have a, a face, a false peace and safety, a ceasefire on Remembrance Day, on 11-11, probably at 11 a.m., Israel time okay there's gonna Trump's gonna step in this is where all of this work that they've been doing previously for the Abrahamic Accords Trump's gonna be the hero he's gonna come in and you know this this beast that rises out of the sea where it says oh who can make war with this beast who can make war with him okay who can make war with him 
And when you read it, let's go to Revelation 13, where it says the rise of the beast. Okay, because we're not going to be here anymore, brothers and sisters. This is Satan's 42-month reign now. Okay, so remember that in um, Revelation chapter 12, you've got, um, you know, the devil, he goes to devour the child, right? Because she's about to be caught up to... Uh, father's throne that's because satan's just been released and the first thing he's going to do is because he knows that once he's released god's people are going to be um delivered that's what it says in daniel chapter 12 right at that time michael shall stand up who's the one who has the war in heaven michael okay at that time there's going to be a time of trouble that never was before at that time thy people shall be delivered boom 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 Okay, as soon as Satan's released, he's going to try and devour the child because he knows that's happening imminently the same time. He misses it and then he's going to go up into um, up into heaven and he's going to try and present himself as he did in Job. Okay, at the, at the wedding feast, you know, at, at, in the kingdom. And then father's going to say to him, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And Satan is going to be speechless. And then Father God is going to get his angels and they're going to bind him hand and foot and cast him out of this, out of heaven. Okay. And we're going to be celebrating and we're going to say victory and, you know, glory, glory, glory. The, um, the devil who, um, you know, him and his angels. And I'll show you the rest of Second Peter in a minute because it's not just the devil that's been accusing us day and night. It's the, it's all of the other angels who accuse us too. Um, you know, he's been cast down to the earth and now we're free, but woe to the inhabitants of the earth because the devil has come down to you and he's wrath because he's got a short time left. That's the 42 months, <laughs> three and a half years or the 1,260 days. Oh, brothers and sisters, this is amazing. Okay. So check this out, right? Um, he, I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. This, the reason the beast, which I believe is Trump, will have a head, a deadly head wound. It'll appear as Trump has been assassinated, brothers and sisters. And did I not show you in the last video? Probably not, because that's the one that got banned. But I showed you that Trump was going to be like this, um, the Turkish president, the Turkey president. Um, they put an announcement out. Oh no, uh, who was it? Was it in Turkey or Iran? One of the two, um, they wanted to um, assassinate Trump because he was the one who um, killed their big leader, okay, when he was president. So it's kind of a tit-for-tat thing. But brothers and sisters, this is why this works perfectly. Satan gets cast out of heaven by a deadly head wound that um, Michael puts on um, Satan boom, with his big sword, right? It's probably like... The sword of Thor down across Satan's head and Satan comes crashing to this earth and Satan has to enter into the man of sin for that man of sin to go into the son of perdition. Okay, so let's say that it's Trump. If when Satan possesses or goes into Trump, just like he went into Judas, um, then Trump is going to have the same effects. He's going to have that same deadly head wound. And this is why it works out perfectly that Trump is probably more than likely going to be assassinated. And guess what's going to happen? He's going to be resurrected in front of the whole world. And this is why the whole world will wander after the beast. And this is why the whole world will quite happily worship him. You know, and it's all going to come together. The worship of this man and the the you you uh, 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 the unifying um, religions of Islam, Judaism, and uh, Catholicism—they're all going to come together, and it's all just look at the world right now. We stand with Palestine. We stand with Palestine. We stand with Palestine. Right? The whole world's already doing it, brothers and sisters. This is—it's only moments, but moments away. Everything, every every duck is in its row right now. We're just waiting for this, um, for Christ to come down and open that open that um, abyss, right? Because he's he's he is the one who has the keys of heaven and hell. He earned it, so he's going to come down and open it. It's only him that can do so. 
he's probably going to have his, um, you know, his mighty angels with him, like Michael and all that with him. But he's going to release them. But we're going to be, we're going to be safe and protected, brothers and sisters. We're going into that heavenly ark. And then the door's going to be shut. And then probably Satan's going to be released. I don't know which way it's going to be, but I know that we're going to be protected. So we've got nothing to worry about. But this is incredible. And I'm so, so thankful. And, and all praises go to the Almighty Father in heaven. All praises go to him. I could have never, ever, ever, ever found this if I did not rely on his Holy Spirit, on the teachings of the Holy Spirit. This is just amazing. And I hope you can see how amazing this is, brothers and sisters, because this shows not just, you know, hoping and wishing, oh, we can find a rapture verse here and we can find a rapture verse there. This is it, brothers and sisters. This is the evidence, the scriptural evidence of the end times, of our deliverance, of our salvation, of our redemption, of our helpazo. This is the evidence, the scripture. And, um, you know, this is exciting. This is so exciting. And here, you know, we see here, I oh know that's the one. Well, basically, when um, in Revelation 9, let's go to Revelation 9. Well, hang on, I want to read the rest of Second Peter before I forget, okay, because this is always what I do. I always read half of the, the let's read the rest of it because this is incredible. Okay, so where do we get up to? Okay, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned with an overthrow, uh, making them as end samples unto them, Unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just lot, vexed with the filthy con conversations of the wicked. Um, for that righteous man dwelling among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from, the, from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation, and to restore the unjust to the day of judgment to be punished. And, you know, why should we be surprised? Look at the four angels under the river in Euphrates. They've been bound. They've been bound, and so has the fallen angels um, from, you know, in the book of Enoch. They've been bound for 70 generations, brothers and sisters. 70 generations. This is why it's going to be hell on earth. This is why the pale green horse is the only rider with a name and his name is death and all of hell follows him and he's going to kill one fourth of the earth that is satan brothers and sisters that is satan being cast down because when he's cast down like i said it's not only the dead in christ that are rising it's also the dead wicked that will be rising this is where you're getting your zombie apocalypse from it's going to be a horrific time Okay, whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusations against them before the Lord. See, whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusations before, uh, sorry, whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusations against them before the Lord. See, this is who's accusing us day and night day and night but these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understood not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the day in the daytime uh, spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin 
beguiling, unstable uh, souls and heart they have exercised with covet covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and have gone astray, following the ways of Balaam, the sons of Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbid the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that carry with a tempest to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. The mists of darkness, okay? That's another thing I wanted to show you. The mists of darkness, okay? We've got the mist there. Where did I read this about the mist? Um, oh, where's the mist? It must be in Revelation 9. Um, the fifth angel. The fifth angel, fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star out of heaven falling to the earth, and was given to it the key of the pit of the abyss. And he opened up the pit of the abyss, and went up smoke from the pit, like the smoke of a furnace grate, and were darkened the sun and the air by the smoke of the pit. Oh, I read somewhere in here about the mist. But anyway, I, I won't get sidetracked, otherwise I'll be here for ages more. Um, okay, the mist, but I know it's in there. I know it's describing the pit that Satan was bound in. It's, the, it's called the mist of the darkness, okay? Uh, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The later end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it is happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned onto his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mere. Oh, oh brothers and sisters, you know, these angels that left their heavenly estate, it's just... All of this is coming together so incredibly well now, brothers and sisters, and, and this is the time. This is the time, big time. This war is happening, this Gog and Magog war, it's, it's, it's Armageddon, it's all of them combined. We've been lied to, we've been deceived into the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, thinking that this is a doctrine that, you know, we're going to all of a sudden escape now and, um, you know... We're going to be up ruling and reigning with Christ or we're going to come down here ruling and reigning. We're going to have all the evil people, you know, under our thumb and we're going to be able to, um, you know, it just makes absolutely no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. But this is this makes sense. This makes perfect sense that when Christ died on the cross, he went down and he he won the victory and he got the keys to hell and uh, death and life right and he won the victory he saved the prisoners you know he set the captives free he set the captives free brothers and sisters the one who had been deceived by the evil workings of satan and while he saved the captives he bound satan so that the word the gospel the good news of the gospel could spread it doesn't mean there's no evil on this world brothers and sisters i've never said that but if Satan was on this world right now, hi carumba, we wouldn't even be here. We would have been, it would have been long finished. This story would have been long finished. Okay, so Satan is about to be released from the pit, from the angel who holds the key. 
the angel that holds the key. That is our Lord and Saviour, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Okay, don't come at me with me speaking blasphemy or, oh, she's like a Jehovah's Witness now. She believes Christ is an angel. It's, it's lit, literally written in the Word of God. Fight, you know, take, take this argument up to Father. Okay, take this argument up to Father. Not with me, because I'm literally reading from the Scriptures. I'm literally reading some scriptures. Go back into the Old Testament and have a look where it's where um, it's it's like Christ is Father's representative. Okay, it's he's the ambassador of his Father. Okay, and he appears in many forms. You know, like in the, in the burning uh, furnace with the three Hebrew boys was one like the Son of Man. Like you know. And and speaking of that, let's have a look because I want to show you something while we're talking about Christ being like an angel. Um, you know, and it says that you know that Christ was made a, a little lower than the angels too. So that's what I'm trying to say to you. When I, when I talk like this, brothers and sisters, I'm in no way diminishing what Christ is and what Christ has done for us. Still. I still will stand and I will die for this truth that the Father Almighty God is the one true God. Okay? And he is greater than Christ. But Christ is his one and only begotten Son who sits at the right hand side of his throne. This is why he was made so much better than the angels. Okay? But when he became a human, he was made a little lower than the angels. Okay, but that was that's the greatness of his gift and what he did. He gave up where he was. He didn't have to do that. We could have all been lost and doomed. But because Father loved the world so much and because Christ loved us so much, that's what the plan was. And thank the good Lord and thank Almighty Thank Almighty God and thank Yeshua Jesus Christ for carrying out that plan. Otherwise we'd all be doomed. Okay, we wouldn't none of us wouldn't even be here. Um, but hang on, I just want to find this other thing in Revelation. I think it is, mm, just two seconds. Okay, this is in Revelation chapter 22. I'm going to show you something here, brothers and sisters, and this is amazing, okay? Now that we, I hope that you can see, I'm not just trying to, I'm not trying to sound like I'm um, bringing Christ down in any shape or form, okay? Without Christ, none of us would, you know, the gift would have never been given for our eternal salvation, okay? Please know that. But it's so important that we know what the truth is, the absolute truth, okay? So I want to read Revelation chapter 22, and I want you to hear something. And he showed me a pure river of life of water, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, there was a tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And they shall, uh, there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither the light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign for ever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Listen to this. Who, who's saying this now, brothers and sisters? Who is saying this? Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Who do you think that's? Who do you think is saying that? I would hope you would assume that's Christ, Jesus Christ. Now, what's what's the next thing that says? And I, John, saw these things and I heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Who's showing him these things? Jesus Christ. Now listen to what he says. Then said he unto me, see that you do that not, for I am a fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets 
and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. <laughs> yes, yes, Yeshua, yes. Okay, legit Christ is saying, behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of this book, prophecies of this book. And I, John, saw, saw, uh, and I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and seen... I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. And he said unto me, See that you don't do that, for I am the fellow servant of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the saying of this book, Worship God. Did not Yeshua Jesus Christ also tell us this in, um, in Matthew and that? When um, he was on the cross and they were like, oh, your mother wants to speak to you. And he said, oh, who's my mother and who's, you know, whatever. He said, anybody um, anybody that worships the father, that is my mother, my brother and my sister. Okay. Um, Christ has been very, very, very um, clear. Okay. Very clear. I only worship the father. He said, why are you calling me good? There's only one that is good, and that is the Almighty God, the true Father in heaven, okay? He's even saying it here. He's even saying it here. See that you don't do that. Don't don't you dare bow down and worship me. I am your fellow servant and, and of thy brethren, the prophets, okay? Of them which keep the saying of this book, worship God and God alone. The first commandment. I, the Lord thy God, are one, okay, and only worship me. Nothing beside me, above me, below me, nothing in my likeness, because I am a jealous God. So, brothers and sisters, this is of utmost importance. This is why Christ said, in vain they do worship me, teaching the commandments of men. Okay, in vain they do worship me. This is why Christ also said, "Many are going to come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, did I not do any? Did all? Did I not do all of this stuff in your name?" And Christ is going to say, "Get away from me! I have no idea who you are, you workers of iniquity." Okay, be very careful, brothers and sisters. Be very, very, very careful. Those people who are still holding fast to this Trinity, to this blasphemy doctrine of the Trinity from this council of Nicaea, from this Roman doctrine from the Trinity, okay? This is the devil's greatest trick, brothers and sisters, is to deceive us slightly. He's deceived us to the times and the laws, and he's also deceived us. He's like, well, if I can't get the worship then, then I'm going to split the worship up of the Almighty Father who only deserves worship. Okay, and then people are going to say, oh, but, you know, it says that, um, you know, the three wise men or whatever went to go and worship the baby Jesus and stuff. Um, worship also means honor and, um, it, you know, and glory and, uh, um, you know, like, anyway, I'm not going to get into that, but I just want you to understand, brothers and sisters, that this is so important that you understand that even Christ himself said, don't do that. Don't fall down and worship me. Remember every time that Christ healed someone as well? Remember he said, don't tell anybody about this. Because he knew people were going to say, oh, this man's a God. This man's a God. He didn't want that. He did not want that. Everything was given to him by his father. That's why he could do all these things. Okay, but it doesn't mean that he is God. It would have never been fair if Christ was God half man, half God, that's ridiculous. It would have never been fair. That wouldn't have been a fair, uh, fair um, what do you call it, death on the cross. If he was half God at the time of the crucifixion, then he could have made it seem on the outside that he... Uh, this is ex actually funny that you say this because this is exactly what Islam says about Christ because they actually say he went on the cross but he never died. And it says in the Quran that he appeared to die, but he was taken off the cross before he died. So, wow. Thank you, Father. This is literally what is written in the Quran. Okay? And and this should make it very clear to you that um, this is why this is why the Jews find it, you know, they can't um, relate to Christians because of this Trinity doctrine. Because they know thy Lord thy God is one. Okay, and it's blasphemous. But um, 
you know, Jesus Christ, the, the only begotten Son of the living God. And this is what Peter, <clears throat> when Christ said to his disciples, he said to Peter, who do you, who do you say, uh, who do the people say that I am? And, you know, and Peter said, oh, they say you this, they say you that. And then Christ said, well, Peter, who do you say that I am? Or, so, yeah, Simon Peter, yeah. And he goes, you know, who do you say that I am? And, um, and Peter answers, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, uh, flesh and blood didn't tell you this. So in other words, your own mind didn't make this up. He said, but only my, the father in, my father in heaven told you this, okay? That Christ is the son of the living God. And then Christ said, upon this rock, what rock? You know, many people say, oh, Peter's the rock of the church. The Catholics will say that, that Peter is the rock of the church. No, upon this rock, upon this foundation. What foundation? That Christ is the son of the living God. <laughs> like literally the whole reason that we're saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whoever shall believe in him shall be saved. It doesn't say that whoever shall believe that Christ is God himself. Like, pfft. But that is the rock. That is the foundation of the gospel. It's that Christ is the son of the living God and that he's most beloved of Father and that if we believe him and believe Yeshua Jesus Christ and we do Yeshua, Yeshua's um, commandments, the, you know, the new commandments, he didn't abolish the old ones, he just elaborated you know, like he said, um, you've heard it of old not to commit adultery, but I tell you, don't look on any woman with lust in your heart because you've already committed adultery then. You know, it was the elaboration, um, you know. <sighs> anyway, um, I'm going to leave it with that because it's uh, yeah, 5.30 now, so I've probably been talking for a little bit. But I, I was just really, 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 really excited to bring this across to you. And, oh, brothers and sisters, this is incredible. And, you know, again, I mean, come on now. Gog and Magog on the 11th of the 11th at the London, you know. And again, you know. We have been deceived to times and laws and season and places. The guy that took Jesus Christ down off the cross that paid um, and gave him a king's burial, right? That guy, Joseph of Ar Aramean, um, that very guy who took Jesus off the cross, he is buried in the UK. You can see his burial plot still to this day. These things didn't happen all that long ago, brothers and sisters. They didn't happen all that long ago. But um, Satan tried real hard to cover it up and he tried to cover it with mud. <laughs> I mean, isn't, isn't that kind of funny when you think about it? The Father destroyed the world with water, right? Cleansing of water. And the best Satan could do was mud. Ah. <laughs> uh. But, you know, the funny thing is with mud is you can dig it up and you can see what's underneath. And it's like, hang on, what's going on here? So just be open-minded, have a fresh heart, fresh eyes when you read the Bible again, brothers and sisters, and come out of her, my people. Get out of the churches because they're just relaying what the church fathers have told them from years and years and generations before. They're paid to say these things. They get a weekly wage, brothers and sisters, these ministers and and um, <clears throat> pastors and things like this, so that they stick to the script. Unfortunately, it's sad but true. This is why we are to come out of her, my people, and be like childlike faith and just, even though the whole world can be coming against you, trust in what the Lord is showing you. Okay, I, I trust that the Lord will never lead me down the wrong path. He will only lead me down a dimly lit path so that I can say, hang on, there's a little bit of light there. Let's go have a look over there and then open the door and poof, all this light comes out. It's like, okay, thank you, Father. Okay, you just have to trust, trust in Father that even if you're going to have a look at places where, you know, the world says that's forbidden. You're a heretic if you're going to look at that. You know, 
don't don't give a crap what anyone says you follow the holy spirit that's why every each, each and every one of us has the holy spirit it's a gift from father so to teach us and comfort us in all things and we should use that and uh you know this is what um this is what makes the spirit happy this is this is why you get so happy you know in your physical appearance why you can't stop smiling while you're you know you get all hot and flustered inside and you're like you know you're jumping with joy like i am the biggest kid i always have been and um you know i've i'm the type of person who walks down the street and if i'm by myself and someone's walking towards me and they look at me i cannot help but smile or laugh or do something like this because it's just in me i can't i I am such a child and I'm so glad now because I used to think that got me in trouble a lot of the time because my heart was always on my sleeve all the time and I used to say to my mum, geez, I wish I could be a bitch sometimes and mum was like, don't, don't you ever change and I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I didn't go down that path because of the world hurting you and things like this, you know, my God is my strength and my grace and my happiness and my love and my joy and you my brothers and sisters are literally my diamonds and my gold on this earth you are my rewards your your um your company your companionship your support your comments you know your emails this is this is it this is this is my lotto on this earth is you know and i thank the good lord every single day for each and every one of you and I'm so excited to give you all a cuddle and a hug and a jig. We're going to dance. We are going to dance like never before. This is going to be the best party in the entire universe. I cannot wait. I am stoked. I just want this to be over and done with. And I'm so glad that Father has been revealing this to the most simplest of hum, you know people imaginable. I don't have anything to my name. I haven't got a certificate. I don't have a doctorate. I don't have um, anything. I never accomplished anything in my life of what the world would see. But boy, I love studying the word of God. And boy, I love the kingdom of heaven. And I'm so glad now. I'm so, so glad that I have been segregated and pushed out and been called a black sheep and a, you know, a crazy lady. <laughs> This is our time to shine. This is our time to shine, brothers and sisters. You know, the whole world is falling apart. And we're like, whoa, whoa, bring it on. So, yeah. Oh, man, I'm on cloud nine. I'm so happy right now. I, I pray that this overflows into, you know, into your life. And I pray that how I feel right now is just coming into your life. If you've got anything going on, that it just surpasses that and that you know where you're going. That this is only but a, a breath and a drop in the ocean of time. So just hold on, brothers and sisters. Keep your lamps full of hope, trust, faith and belief. We are nearly there. We're nearly home. Um, and this is amazing. Just, you know, this is literally amazing. Absolutely amazing. All right. I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to continue to do more study. But, you know, this is unbelievable. Satan has been bound when Christ went down and got the keys from heaven and hell and defeated and had the victory of him. Ah, oh, this is such an incredible revelation. Such an incredible revelation, brothers and sisters. And, um, yeah. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. I hope this video has blessed you. It has blessed me immensely. And, um, again, all praises go to the Most High and his beautiful son, Yeshua Jesus Christ. Um, I love you all so very much. And if I do not see you in the next videos, I will see you in the skies. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.